Is going through anxiety some sort of spiritual experience? Are you dealing with some dark night of the soul? Is this happening because you did some sin in the past? Is this your karma? What's going on? Why are you experiencing this? What are the spiritual implications of this? Is this even a spiritual issue? This may be a question that you have on your anxiety recovery journey. In fact, if you're focusing on anxiety recovery, you might be noticing that, you know, there's a lot of spiritual gurus talking about anxiety and you're starting to think, wait, is this not a medical issue? Is this some sort of uh, spiritual thing that I'm going through? Well, in this video, I'm going to really break down anxiety and how it relates to spirituality, if it does at all. Um, it's something that I've avoided talking about for a while actually i'd never wanted to make a video on this actually because i felt that people this was going to be a little bit more of an advanced topic and what happened was actually my own mentor recommended the fact that look i think you should make a video on this even though people might not be at this level yet they might still be curious or they might still be intrigued and these are questions they're probably having so with that said i'm going to really break it down but it is important for you to understand first and foremost that when you're going through anxiety you're going to be coming up with a lot of imaginative things right and what i mean by that is your mind is on overdrive it's thinking a lot so you're gonna have a pretty vast imagination so if it's something that you want to hold off on and maybe watch later once you're in a better place in recovery that's totally fine but if you're really curious about it i'm really going to break it down how does anxiety does it even relate to spirituality do i need to be spiritual is spirituality even involved at all well here's my take I remember thinking maybe anxiety was some sort of spiritual thing myself. What happened was is that I kept going to doctors and they kept saying I was fine. Every time I went to a doctor, every time I went to uh, you know some sort of specialist, they were always like, no, 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 everything's fine. And to me, it felt like there was like this nuclear bomb that went off and nobody else could see it but me. I'm like, no, 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 I'm really struggling. And I'd never been in a situation where I'd gone to the doctor in terrible agony and they were like, there's nothing wrong. And so what happened naturally was I started thinking maybe it's something else. This is actually gonna sound, right now it's, it sounds a little bit humorous, but at the time I wasn't sure. I, I thought, hey, maybe I'm possessed. And I was like, why am I experiencing this? Because I wasn't getting answers and I knew something was wrong. I wasn't feeling right. I was feeling really intense symptoms. I was getting really sick and I was like, okay, well, if it's not medical, is it some paranormal stuff? In fact, I remember I even went to my dad. My dad's a very spiritual, very religious guy. And I sat him down and I'm like, dad, am I going through some like weird, like spiritual, like exorcism, like some sort of like <laughs> demonic thing? And he just looked at me and he's like, no, not at all. You're not experiencing any of that. And I was just so stuck on the fact of, look, why can't I get better? And every time I would try to find things on anxiety, I'd find like these like self-development guys and like these spiritual people. And I was like, I don't care about any of that stuff. I just want to get better. Now, keep in mind, before the experience, I was not a religious person at all. In fact, I was very scientific. I, I kind of prided my intellect, you know, breaking things down, deducing things, really looking at things and thinking about it and, and really thinking to myself, well, if I haven't experienced it, if it's not in the physical world, it's, I mean, like, you know, that's all you experience. So it's not real. Then what was happening was I was experiencing really intense symptoms. I was experiencing really intrusive thoughts. And because I couldn't find an answer, I said, well, maybe it's, you know, something spiritual. And actually what was really ironic is when I was going through the anxiety recovery journey, that's when I started praying a lot more. That's when I started saying, okay, look, like, I'm sorry, you know, like I, I haven't been very religious before. Like, I just want to do anything to get better because I was so desperate, right? I was looking up things online. I was praying. I almost took like the shotgun approach, which is like, okay, I want to do anything and everything I can to get better. And if it was a religious thing, well, I'm a believer now. Okay. I'm okay. If it was a religious thing and the religious stuff fixes me okay cool my bad i'm back in you know what you know whatever that was and you might be noticing this too you might be trying to get help and you might be seeing on forums people are like oh we'll give yourself up to you know your lord and savior jesus christ or you know whatever religion they practice and so the question is really simple is, 
is this related to spirituality in any way? Well, here's the honest answer, okay? When it comes to anxiety, it really is based on your nervous system. However, anxiety recovery can often lead to self-development or spirituality. Now, here's what I mean, okay? Now, when I was going through the anxiety recovery journey, when I was actually getting better, I had to come to terms with the fact, and it's something you're gonna have to come to terms with as well, which is, okay, these intrusive thoughts that you're experiencing are not you. That's your mind. You are not your mind, right? Your mind can be making up a bunch of stuff. You don't have to respond to that. In fact, your mind works for you, not the other way around. And when you're in the anxiety cycle, you're very identified with your thoughts. What if I go crazy? Oh my God, what if I do go crazy? Oh, what if this heart palpitations are the onset of a heart attack? Oh my God, what if it does? Okay, and then you know what ends up happening is you become very identified with your thoughts. And the same thing with your physical symptoms, right? You might be experiencing really intense physical symptoms, but when you get it looked at, physically everything is fine. So in a certain way, I'm experiencing sensations that my body almost isn't producing. What that made me realize also was I'm not my mind, I'm not my body. So then the fundamental question was, okay, in order to recover, I don't listen to my mind, I don't listen to my body because I'm in a sensitized state. And what happened was the mind became quiet over time and I started experiencing less symptoms from my body. And so something fundamental happened, which is, okay, if I'm not my body, if I'm not my mind, then what am I? Now, you might be wondering, okay, well, Sean, look, I'm an atheist, I'm agnostic, whatever it is. That's fine too. Fundamentally, what's happened is your nervous system is sensitized. You need to desensitize it. One of the ways to do that is disconnecting from your mind and your body, right? Even though people are agnostic or atheist, they still do mindfulness meditation, right? Mindfulness meditation isn't related to any you know, spiritual practice per se or in a specific religion. People that are atheists or self-defined atheists also do mindfulness meditation. And when I mean mindfulness meditation, what I'm referring to is just being aware right just like noticing every thought not reacting to it noticing your body sensations not reacting to it very similar to how to respond to your symptoms right there doesn't need to be a religious component behind it and in that case even if you are that recovery is still totally possible what happens though is that a lot of people will either get to recovery and then just go back to living or what people will do is they'll like me where they will realize they're not their mind, they're not their body, so then they're gonna be like, well, what am I? And if you want to experience, okay, well then what am I truly? Then that leads to subdevelopment or spirituality. But at this point, it becomes outside the realm of anxiety. Does that make sense? This is something that's outside the realm. You don't need to figure this out on your journey or even before your journey. But what happens is with anxiety recovery, what I find with a lot of people that I've helped a couple of years ago, they're still in this self-development journey. They're still in this uncovering who they really are. It's almost like the anxiety recovery journey ends, but then another journey begins at the same time. A great book that actually really helps is, um, if you, I, I don't recommend this book unless people are a little bit more advanced. Um, I recommend this to people in the mentorship once they've been in the mentorship for a few months and they're doing really well. And now they're in the process of, you know, you can, I can tell they're wanting to know more. What I do is I actually recommend this book. It's called The Untethered Soul. It's by, it's by a guy named Michael Singer. And, uh, it's a great book. If you're not, it's not required for like the anxiety recovery journey. I think if you're dealing with anxiety, I think books like Claire Weeks are a lot more relatable, but if you wanna go beyond anxiety a little bit more and you wanna learn a little bit more, not just about anxiety, but how to process other things, that's a great book. And what's really interesting is I'll play a clip, but he says something that's really interesting and it highlights what I mentioned, which is once you start realizing you're not your mind, you're not your body, you're almost like this awareness, he describes it, well, he'll say it himself, check it out. What I love that you said is, that really is the beginning of spirituality. That is. Because to separate what you're not from what you are, if you don't do that, right. you're gonna stay lost. The self is spiritual. The one who's watching is the gateway to spirituality. So if you continue to just get involved in the mind, in the, in the thoughts of the mind, this true spiritual path doesn't take place. So that's when the path starts, right? But again, that is after the anxiety recovery journey. I would say that's well past anxiety recovery journey. What I often find is people try to go into that journey faster before they're even out of the cycle. And because they're sensitized, because their mind is still racing, 
because their imagination and creativity are so much higher that they start coming up with mental drama around it rather than actually focusing on staying on the recovery journey. But whether you decide to go on that journey or not, it's not really that important right now. The biggest thing, what I always say, is focus on the next step in front of you. What's the next step? Quit looking at the mountain and saying, okay, well, what's at the peak? Just focus on the next step. And the biggest thing is if you're struggling with panic attacks, if you're getting physical symptoms, if you're getting intrusive thoughts, if it's really reduced your quality of life, if you feel like you can't go a lot of places because of these symptoms, well, that's the first thing you need to address. You don't need to try to think your way into these things. In fact, one of the things that you learn about anxiety recovery is that you realize there's different modes of knowing. And this is where the spiritual process comes in too, to a certain degree, right? You can know something by intellectually knowing something, but you can also know something through experiencing something. See, intellectually, there's nothing wrong with you. You're fine, right? And the only way you know this is because you've gotten everything ruled out by your doctors. They're saying nothing's wrong. Intellectually, on paper, you're fine, but you're feeling this way. And what that highlighted to me, that experience matters more. It's the experience that's really the key. And the experience I was feeling was that I was still experiencing really intense symptoms and my quality of life had dropped a lot because of it. So the point is, is that sometimes you can't think your way through things. In fact, you trying to think your way intellectually is actually what's creating a problem, right? Think of the intellect as a knife, right? And so if you're trying to create something and if you're just are trying to use a knife, like let's say you're trying to stitch something and you're using a knife, well, you're gonna ruin the whole thing. And when anxiety recovery, what it often leads to when it comes to self-development, when it comes to spirituality, all these things, is that it's a different mode of knowing that goes beyond the mind. Because you gotta understand, the mind is actually designed for survival, right? So it's based on survival. But when you talk about spirituality, you're talking about something that goes beyond survival, right? It's almost boundless in a way. And your mind is very used to constructing things, right? It's used to um, segmenting things, almost um, putting things in discrete categories. Or even another way of looking at it is your mind's used to dissecting things. This is this, that is that, they're separate things. This thing is a different variation of that. That's what the mind does. But now when you go into spirituality, there is no distinction. There isn't this and then there's that. There's no duality in that sense. There's almost one, it becomes boundless in a way. And look, these aren't things that you need to figure out right now. Once you're in a much better place, once you're well into your recovery journey, then you can start thinking about these things. You don't need to figure that out now. And what a lot of people do is they overcomplicate recovery. They try to bring more things in. And what happens is when I'm guiding people in the mentorship, what I'm doing is separating things out. I'm like, look, you don't need this. You don't need this. You don't need this. Just focus on this. And what a lot of people they have this impulse or this compulsion of trying to bring things in. Oh, well, what happened from when I was a child and this happened? Well, my spirituality is this or is this, I read this about quantum mechanics and I'm like, cut that out. Just focus on this. You can go back to all those things later. And what a lot of people do is they end up complicating recovery. So make sure to keep it simple. Um, and you know, these things about self-development, about spirituality, you'll, you'll naturally become intrigued by it as you're getting better and as you're living and as you're thriving. But right now you're in a survival state and thinking about higher level things like this is not appropriate for a survival state. You need to turn off this fight or flight response. You need to go back to living and rest and digest and looking at these things from a calm, relaxed perspective, not in a sensitized, you know, I feel like my symptoms are doing this and feel like I'm sick and thinking about this stuff right now. So I hope this video helped. Again, this wasn't something I really wanted to talk about. I'm not even sure if I'm going to release this video. So if you uh, see this video, it's because I decided to release it for some reason. Um, my biggest focus is really, I'm a big believer of right information, right time. And I always felt when people were watching these videos, they were in the beginning stages of recovery, um, that I didn't want to go into more advanced topics because I didn't want people that were too beginner to get affected by advanced topics and then spiral themselves. But um, I know it's a question a lot of people have and I've been quite, kind of quiet about it because I just didn't want to share because I didn't want to create more problems, right? But that being said, um, I, I was convinced to do this and I think it's a good idea and I know um, a lot of people have this question and I'm really curious about your comments and in this video in particular i'm really going to be looking at your comments and seeing what you guys think and so um let me know i hope you enjoyed this video and uh check out the resources down below uh, the free book the facebook group uh, 
you know, if you want to apply for mentorship, uh, you can follow me on Instagram, you know, DM me there. So all those things. All right. Well, I'll see you later and uh, take care.